morning on the farm. Last night it was late. It was till uh, 11 p.m. when the harvest is finished. It's now seven. We had a late start. Got some more cutting to do in here. You're sick of hearing about cutting. <laughs> it's currently a big part of what I'm I'm doing here. But here, uh, the small flowers. These are how these are progressing. So we are we're about 20 days in, and we expect these to be flowering at about 34 to 39 days. They're coming along well. This is something. That's how an evil do from time to time. And now since the cutting last night, there's a lot of straw in the fields. Um, she'll put this around the flowers, around the base of them. It helps prevent the grass from coming up. So now that we've had the rice taken off last night, there's a lot of um, stalks, rice stalks in the rice fields. I feel pretty confident that she'll probably take a lot of that and bring it here and put it around the base of the flowers. It somewhat stifles the grass growing up between the plants. And that's one of the things that has to happen. There's last night's rice. And no, that's not all of it. That's only a small portion of it. But that will be our rice for this coming year, the rice that we will eat. We eat our own rice, which is a good feeling. The product of our own labors. So this will stay out here and we will turn it. It stays in the sun. The sun dries the kernels out more and we use a shovel or a rake and we turn it over to make sure that the sun gets to all of it. Maybe about three days. And then um, probably today we'll pop into the local store and we'll buy some, some rice bags, the sacks, which that'll get transferred into and stored for the next year. And then as we want it, as we need rice for cooking, we take um, a couple of sacks of it to Papa Bart, who's a neighbor, a close family friend, who has a machine for dehusking the rice so normally it would take um, two sacks of a bit more than two sacks of rice with the husk on when you take the husk off of it it will amount to about one sack of clean dehusk rice so it's about a 50% volume change so the morning after harvest is done taken off all the crop and it's pretty quiet here right now. <laughs> Mem's off um, checking on another farm of a family member that the guys are going in to cut today but they're away in Bangkok so she's just taking care of um, organizing them for that and telling them how to get in and uh, how they want it cut so I'm just here on my lonesome at the moment but that's cool and there's the field. It's not so beautiful anymore. <laughs> there's no beautiful rice on it. So there's, you know, one and one more down the distance. Another one here. And then, of course, over there's one more. So those are our fields. And when I was talking um, yesterday and last night, I was telling you how amazing the machine is and the, the driver um, with the harvester, with the Yanmar, and look at the field here now. You can see the water. It's churned up mud, and you couldn't walk in it. You know, you'd be knee deep and be losing your boots. That, that machine just seems to float over the top of it like, um, I don't know, like a ghost on Halloween. Okay, it's been a couple of days since the harvest and the majority of the rice went to the rice company. We'll sell that and we'll get money for that. 
but um, we keep a portion of it for ourselves. Um, you know, Thai people, Thai rural people, um, enjoy eating their own rice. So the fruits of their own labours. And rice is a pretty sort of sacred thing in rural Thailand. It's the, um, how do you say, man does not live by bread alone. But in Southeast Asia, uh, rice is very, very important. So at the moment, before we can, so at the moment, before we can actually bag that, um, we've got it out on the front concrete area here. Now, we got some rain clouds up above. So at the moment, it's not out in the sun. But uh, when those clouds go away and we got sun shining again, that will be spread out thin across this concrete area. And the warmth of the concrete and the rays of the sun will dry out any excess moisture which is in it which has to be done before you bag it now you can see that's not the rice that you are used to this is still got obviously the husks on but that's how we'll store it in in sacks with the husks on and then as we need rice for our own consumption we will take that to a chap who has the uh, machine for separating the husks from the actual rice. That does multiple things. There's a lot of impurities and sort of foreign material like a bit of seed or, or weed from you know, other things that might have ended up growing in amongst the crop. We get rid of most of that but uh, there's still always something. And there's a bit of dust and there's a little bit of chaff and a, a little bit of everything. But um, it goes through his machine. It goes through a series of screens which gets rid of all the dust, the rubbish, the foreign material until it's just rice with husks on. And then it goes into the actual machine and it removes the husks and the husks go one direction in the machine and the cleaned rice goes into the, into the sack. So on average, one bag of rice in this condition will, once the husks are removed, will equate to about 35 to 40% of that original volume. And that's how much it will shrink down. So it will take two and a bit bag of this that we see now to make one full bag of rice. These are all parts of the equation. That's how it works. Behind the scenes, the stuff you don't see, when you walk up to a shelf and you buy a bag, whether it be a one kilo, five kilo, 10 kilo, um, you, you don't know what happened. You don't know how it got there. It just came from, obviously, the wholesaler. But um, there's quite a bit of process involved. That was just a window into it. Thanks for your time, guys. It's been great having you here. It's been great having returning visitors who are getting something out of my experience living in rural Thailand. I hope it answers some questions for you. I hope that um, it's of some benefit. I would welcome your comments. I would most definitely welcome you subscribing and I'll be able to deliver more content to you in future videos. So if you do subscribe, obviously Google, YouTube knows that you're interested in this topic to you in, in your feeds when you when you go in on, on YouTube in future. So thanks guys. Catch you later. Bye.